Welcome back everybody. The long awaited time is here and today we are gonna be reviewing the Puma Fuse. I know uh, in past videos for reviews I've done, I've burned things, shot them, let my corgi eat them, dragged them on the road, lit them on fire along with a couple other things. Today you can just call me Debbie instead of Jacob because I'm gonna be a downer and I'm gonna be doing none of those things because I was told that while they are great entertainment, it's also not a viable review. <laughs> Okay. Anyways, today we're gonna to be going over some basic concepts to review the Puma Fuse, okay? Number one is gonna be looks of it, the unboxing of it. What does it look? What do I like about it? What do I not like about it? Just from holding it and, and knowing some general concepts about it. And then we're gonna be getting into five overarching concepts that I use to pretty much rank any of the shoes I'm gonna wear, whether I'm competing in it or just working on it generally. And that is number one, traction. How well does this shoe function pushing sleds, how well does it grip the ground, whether you're running, pushing sleds, is it wet, is it dry, whatever the case may be. Number two, we're gonna be going over friction. How well does this shoe work being drug across the wall for handstand push-ups along with other things. Number three is comfortability. If that's a word, don't Webster Dictionary me, who cares. How comfortable are they? How comfortable are they jumping up on down on boxes, doing burpees, doing loads of double unders? You know, I don't want a shoe that's gonna make my arches cramp 20 double unders in. That's a worthless shoe. Number four, we have stability. How well does this shoe function under a load, under duress with some weight? How can you squat in it? Can you clean in it? Can you snatch in it? What can't you do in it? Stability. And finally, the test I use every shoe in um, is a durability and a friction test that I just absolutely love. Just puts the shoe through just hell and back. And that is, is it durable? And how do you judge durability? Well, you do 30 rope climbs for time on it. If you don't have a shoe that wants to break into the functional fitness space that can't survive 30 rope climbs, you don't have a shoe that's worth it. So as promised, we're gonna be going over a visual inspection and what we know about the Puma Fuse shoe before we get into the actual testing of it. The first thing I actually really like about the Puma Fuse is the fact that its cost is substantially cheaper than other competitors in this space in the functional fitness arena shoe space. So this shoe, Puma Fuse, runs for $90 USD and it had free shipping for me. That's already $40 to $50 cheaper USD than any other shoe in this space. And so unless I'm buying like the Nano 3s, I can't get a shoe for $90. So overall, that's pretty nice. Price, I don't know what your margins are, Puma but that's a pretty good price for a shoe. Next up is the weight. Um, the Puma Fuse on average weighs 20 ounces, I believe, per shoe. Metcons weigh 13 and the Nanos weigh 12. And so it's only seven ounces heavier, but I mean, if I'm doing 100 toes the bar for time where I'm having to pick my feet up and touch the bar every time, that's, that's considerable after a certain amount of time if you're competing possibly. Um, so I, it, I do think there's some weight on the shoe that can come off, and so let's actually get, we'll get into that, what things I think can come off the shoe in just a second. Um, the one thing that I think is gonna come with time is different colorways. Um, I think they have four colorways out right now. I think the best company that's done this is Nike. Like they had the Nike ID where you can make your custom shoe and they always come out with cool colorways all the stinking time and they're always really good. Right now, Puma has four. Um, this was the one I thought was the most generic. It wasn't super flashy and super out there. Um, hopefully they come up with more. I say take a book out of Nike's page, a page out of Nike's book and make a make them all different colors, make the user change them, that could be kind of cool. So colorways are eh, hopefully they'll get better. Now let's get into the actual shoe, what I like and dislike about it when I first unboxed it. First up, they have a pull tab in the back, okay? Um, the Metcons used to have them, I think, in their first or second version, and they got rid of them, which I appreciated. Um, I don't really see the purpose of having a pull tag. I mean, if it's there, great pull tab. If it's there, great, but it's not like if you take it off, I'm gonna be like, oh my gosh, you can't put my shoes on. Like, no. Um, the one thing I, we'll see what happens is as it drags along a wall, is it weird? Because the pull tab actually does flex a little bit here. So I'm thinking if I'm doing handstand push-ups and I'm on a wall that isn't smooth, say like a cinder block wall, that could get annoying after a while. And I'm just concerned that that might just break off. And my concept, just get rid of the pull tab. It's kind of worthless. Next up, the tongue. The tongue feels kind of flimsy in the shoe, but I mean, the tongue in a Nike Pegasus is also really flimsy, but the Nike Pegasus isn't built for functional fitness, it's built really for running, not really for rope climbs. Um, so we'll see how the tongue fares up with a little bit of durability. It feels flimsy, but maybe it's great, I don't know. 
Next up is the back of the shoe. So the connection point between the, the, the actual shoe and the sole, it's just, I believe it's just like glued together, which is most shoes. Um, the Nike Metcons have a tab there that allows you for handstand pushups to kind of connect those two together so it doesn't rip apart. Um, I'm curious to see after a lot of handstand pushup reps if this connection point just rips apart or breaks up and it slowly gets worse and worse. So I just, I kind of like the tab that Nike has in the back of the shoe and the Nanos have in the back of some of their shoes for handstand pushups. I thought it was really genius. And if Puma could put that on there, that'd be pretty cool. Next up is what I do like is I actually like how high it is. It sits a little bit higher in your ankle than a Nike Metcon and normally a, a Nano does also. I actually like that for ankle stability. Um, I think if I'm outside running, say I'm trail running, um, or say I'm in the gym doing you know, sprints, line sprints, I actually like that ankle stability there. Um, sometimes I've felt that Nike Metcons and Nanos can kind of go a little bit higher, not too high, but a little bit higher. Might be, you feel like you have a better connection to the shoe overall. So I like the height of the shoe. Uh, next up is the plastic sewn in. I actually, just from a look perspective, this is pretty cool. It like starts over here, right? A part of the shoe. Then it goes through the actual netting on the side of the shoe and then it's like sewn in. I don't know what it stands for. It kind of looks like a Nike swoosh if you're being honest. I don't know what, why it's there. It looks cool. So I'll put that in the light category. Uh, find the last thing about the shoe that I'm not super sold on. I really don't know the, the purpose of it is they have these bubbles. Fish aren't meant to be in a box, kid. It does things to you around the shoe so when you buy the shoe in the first plate these bubbles right here it's like a really hard plastic have like a plastic wrap around them so they don't get scuffed up and so you take out the plastic they're already off here um i don't really know the purpose of these bubbles they're on the back sides of the shoe and there's one up top like i understand this one a little bit on the top but the ones on the sides i i don't really get i don't really understand why that's there and you know, like we talked about earlier, if we're talking about a weight issue with the shoe, it's heavy plastic. If there's, if, unless you can tell me a really good reason for it, just cut it out. Like I don't, I'm not dragging the side of my foot on something. So mm, not a big fan of that one. All right, now we're gonna go over the five characteristics that I think really defines a good shoe. I spent the last week using these in regular class workouts and specifically trying out, like I mentioned, specific movements that I think really are a good indicator of what is and isn't a good shoe. So like I mentioned, the first one is gonna be traction, okay? Push a lot of sleds on turf. I pushed some, some sleds this week on our regular rubber, um, was able to go outside and try them. And I honestly thought that the, the grips on these are actually pretty solid. I think for their first shoe, I'm actually pretty impressed. Um, <clears throat> and one thing I've found with previous shoes I've used from different companies is, Sometimes you'll, when you're pushing a sled like on turf or on the ground like this, if it's a really heavy sled, you'll end up slipping out the back of the shoe. Like this isn't enough here and you'll end up slipping out. I didn't find that. And I think that's due in part because it has such a high ankle spot here that it didn't allow you to slip out of the back of the shoe. So honestly, for traction, I give it an A. It's an A. Up next, we're gonna be talking about friction. And so to test friction for the Puma shoes, we decided, or I decided to do handstand pushups against two kind of different walls. Number one was a soft plywood wall um, that probably 60% of most gyms have. And the next up was a brick wall that is has a lot of friction on it. Um, what I found when doing handstand pushups, whether strict or kipping against the regular soft wall is it wasn't bad, but it was noticeable because there's no lip at the end of this, kind of like a Nike Metcon has, that it didn't slide great. Like I could feel it actually sticking. If you actually look at it, right, this protrudes quite a bit further in the back as it probably should. But the problem was when I'm coming down against the wall, this dragged right here and it's got a lot of really good grip on the back for some reason. And so it actually almost, I felt like it was sticking on the way down. So if you're doing eccentric strict handstand pushups, this is the shoe for you because it's going to slow you down really good. If you're trying to do handstand push-ups, like strict handstand push-ups in a workout, this sticks against the wall and it makes it a little bit more difficult, even on a soft wall. So when I took it to an actual brick wall and did a lot of reps throughout this week, I actually tore the back of the shoes up. Not bad, but enough to see that you can't see what that actual shoe's called. Um, both of them had that, which honestly, like, there's going to be some wear and tears against a brick wall regardless. Um, the one thing I just didn't like about these shoes was I felt like they stuck 
to every wall as you came down um, because of the grip on the back of it. The third thing we're gonna be talking about is how comfortable is the shoe while working out? To test this movement, I've worn it for the past week. Um, specifically to test it, I did it for double unders, for box jump overs, just wearing it around. Um, I'm a size 10 and a half, uh, US size, and I found that if you're gonna buy this shoe, I would buy probably a half a size up. So if I could go back and change, I would probably choose an 11. Um, I think on their website, they don't even show women's sizes, so they tell you what your woman's size is. Um, even you ladies, I might consider going half a size up. I found it was, it was comfortable. Um, I felt comfortable in the shoe, but I felt it was pretty tight. Um, and now sometimes when you're working out, you want a tight shoe. If I'm gonna do sprints side to side, I want a really tight shoe. But when I'm just walking around day to day and I don't wanna really, you know, I'm just wearing it for comfortableness, um, I don't really want a super tight shoe. And even while working out, I feel like the, just the, the width here was just too tight for me. So if you're gonna, buy the shoe, I'd recommend going half a size up. Fourth category we're gonna go over is stability. To test stability, I did some cleans, some squats, and then throughout the week, not on film, I snatched in them, lunged in them, um, and a couple other movements with barbells and dumbbells. And honestly, I have no complaints. I thought it functioned pretty well. Um, I didn't feel unstable. Actually, the one thing I did like about the shoe is, it for some, it feels to me, it may not be actually true, I'm not really sure, but it felt to me that the heel was a little bit elevated as compared to Nanos and Metcons. And so I actually liked that while squatting. It was pretty comfortable when squatting and I felt pretty comfortable cleaning with it um, because it had somewhat of an elevated shoe compared to other shoes I've used in the past. So. You think I was gonna clean that? You're following the wrong YouTube channel. Stability, I thought it was, it was pretty solid. It would probably be pretty easy from here on out to lift in these. I wouldn't have an issue with them. All right, wanna do a quick before and after. We're getting ready to do a durability friction test. 30 rope climbs for time. It's gonna be a doozy. So, quick look at the shoe, before and after. Before, okay, looking pretty good. Little scuffing in the back from handstand push-ups. Not a big deal, okay. But, you know, overall, still looks like the regular shoe. Get ready for the after. You guys want to see my cheering section and the guy who's keeping count for me? Oh, man. Old boy's looking cute. You might be asking yourself, that seems like a stupid test, like who does 30 rope climbs for time? That's why it's called a test. Um, to me, it kind of just mocks essentially, you know, how durable is the shoe over the course of time? I'm trying to speed up that decay process on a shoe inside 10 minutes, or in this case, five minutes. Um, now, most of the time, if I take a shoe through 30 rope climbs for time, um, we'll see some wear and tear. In this one we did, but honestly, I'm not gonna lie, didn't see a whole lot. Obviously, I am um, Jay hooking and I'm a dominant right foot, so this is gonna be my large working foot as it pertains to the J-hook. Um, you can see a little bit of deformed rubber on the bottom of the shoe, but to be honest, I'm not gonna complain about that. It's not a big deal, it is 30 rope climbs. On the tongue, you see a little bit of fraying, but again, it's negligible for 30 rope climbs uh, for time. The one thing I did not like about this shoe for rope climbs, Puma. If your developers and designers are listening, get a pin, Get a paper, take a note. One thing I, I would not wear these rope climbs or these shoes for rope climbs ever again. Um, they functioned well. I mean, not functioned well. They survived well. They didn't show wear and tear. That's awesome. Good for you guys. But in terms of function on rope climbs, I hated them. Um, the reason I hated them is because I J hook. So the outside of my dominant foot, my right foot, is the foot that's going to be um, that is on the outside of the rope that the rope comes underneath and pinches below, but the rope comes right here, right? So it's gonna come on this plastic piece right here. And now this plastic piece looks great, right? It's not torn up at all. 
and that's fine. But the problem with this plastic piece is it's too vertical, okay? This plastic piece from the bottom of the sole of the foot to the top protects the shoe. That's the point of it, okay? That's why they put it there. Um, but the problem is it's too vertical. It doesn't have enough angle of, a, of attack. And the, the reason I, I want that is because the Nanos and the Metcons both have a really sizable angle. If you don't believe me, go into your closet or look down at your foot right now and look at the angle of the outside plastic um, on the sole of your Metcon, right? You'll be able to see there's a pretty substantial angle. The reason for that being is because the rope's allowed to slide as it goes through your foot pretty quickly, right? It's not gonna catch on the rope. It's gonna slide pretty easily. The problem with this verticalness of the sole is there's not a 90 degree angle, but it looks like almost like an 80 degree angle right here, right? So the problem with that is your shoe's gonna go like this. Instead of allowing it to slide through and your shoe doesn't like bend as you go up, your shoe's gonna go from here and as you slide down, it's, or as you're climbing up or down, it's gonna slide in. And so I found that my foot kept getting pulled in and it honestly was super uncomfortable. Um, so note to self, if you make a second shoe, which you probably will, make sure this angle has a little bit more angle because it does not attack ropes very well. You know what the hardest thing after a workout is? Taking off your shoes. I swear, like when you're really tired, I don't even know how to take shoes off anymore. It's like someone tied like the most impossible knot ever in your life. So finally, overall review of the Puma Fuse. And I'm not gonna lie to you, I have so many outtakes of me saying the Puma Fuse wrong. Fuse, fees, Foz, like I'm not even gonna put them in here. I wasted so much time like saying that over again. Um, overall review, decent shoe. I think if you keep the cost the same at $90 USD, right? and you eliminate a couple pieces here and there. So let's get rid of this, this thing here, right? That's, that's worthless. Let's get rid of these bubbles, right? Ah! Oh, bubbles! I love the bubbles! <laughs> so that saves on your weight of your shoe, possibly saves on, if you have a bunch of them shipping together, saves logistically overall, right, for cost of shipping. Um, if we change the angle of this, maybe add some more colorways, I think it's a decent shoe. Like, Stability-wise, durability, comfortability, friction, traction. Honestly, I don't have a whole lot of complaints. Just small things here and there that I think if you fix, you've got a decent shoe, especially for your first time at it. But weight-wise, could go down a little bit. This can go, that can go. Just small things here and there. But anyways, recommendation, 90 bucks. You may or may not like them, but 90 bucks is a lot cheaper than 130, 140. I recommend it. Um, especially if they come out with a V2 and they fix the things we've talked about, then I would give it a, a pretty good recommendation. Anyways, guys, thanks for watching. Um, I have honestly nothing else to say. I've, I've done enough rope climbs today. My arms are really tired and I probably have rabbit on my biceps. Have a great day. We'll talk to you guys later. See you.